here at the Bush Bee Man, we don't normally have to mention disclaimers and stuff because I mean, we try to keep it light and informative and entertaining so that you know you guys out there can see what beekeeping is all about. But when American fowl brood turns up, well, the rules get changed. And the law is that you have to dispose of the girls that have got that disease, even which is pretty crap because we only had two cells in the whole bloody frame. But anyway, the rules is the rules. So if you don't want to see death and destruction, perhaps don't watch this episode. So this is the day that no beekeeper wants. Bloody hell, we've got a little bit of AFB going on here. So we've got to block our little girls in and try and contain this contagion. It's a bit like the flu for bees, but going fucking crazy. Anyway, bless you Americans. So we'll just trap our little ladies in board so they can't get out and have a run. And then they're gonna be not long for this world, apparently. So it's a bit grim, isn't it? Not something you wanna do, but then, you know, better that. Better that, just these five, than the whole bloomin' layout. And uh, so that's the trouble with this shit, it just spreads like wildfire. So I was just flicking through all the details for disposing of bees, and they talk about the fact that you pour a little bit of petrol on their head, which gives them a bit of a hurry up. Interesting thing is, you need a permit to be able to use petrol for something other than putting it in your car. So, you know, crazy shit, isn't it? There's regulations on regulations. So don't forget, you've just got to read all the information before you do anything crazy. Anyway, here we go, the first little bit, you don't need very much of this. Tip it on along the edge, wouldn't you? Right, here we go. It's not very friendly, is it? Sorry, girls. <laughs> They're a really nice healthy box too. That's a bar. We've got a bloody feeder in there. <laughs> That's gonna have to go under fire. Fuck! How the hell, tardy bush bee man? <laughs> Fuck you, isn't it? Oh, a beautiful, healthy box. It's a sad day, isn't it? Sad day here in the bee yard. <sighs> I think I might even have to have a cry. <sighs> this could be worse, it could be all on the fire. <sighs> Hopefully we can contain it. That's the next excitement, isn't it? You mate, a little bit more, bit more, bit more. This is the last one out of our little group, so we'll get that, get them a bit of a fix up. Then we're gonna cover them up over here and figure out how the hell we're gonna burn them in the middle of the fire season. <laughs> What the hell's going on, eh? It's just not fucking cricket, really, is it? There's a stupid ad on the telly doing that at a minute. It's just not really cricket. But anyway, that's no, that's a stupid saying. I'm just a bit sad. if I'd measured this. <laughs> oh. These are using my fumigation pot, so I'm not sure what happens after this. <laughs> this is just temporary until we work out the burning bit. Oops. 
Got them unfit, aren't I? <laughs> Heavy dearly. Anyway, this is not a, if you're wondering, this isn't a permanent solution. It's just to put the ladies in there so is that they're sealed off so they can't get robbed out. I don't think they'll get robbed out when they're full of petrol, but still, we don't want them to be, you know, spreading this crap that we've got. So this is my plan since it's on the move and I happen to have these are what I usually use to fumigate the frames a bit to kill off the dreaded wax moth which used to be my worst problem but now it's kind of the least of my worries but anyway oh the joys of beekeeping <laughs> hey fucking hell Arr. Anyway, so we've just used that tool to open up the infected box. So I just got a little bit of bleach. I mean, you can use all sorts of whatever cleaning stuff you want. The last, the other day, had an industrial cleaner, but bleach seems to work good. I'm just going to rinse my tool off so I don't forget. Give my hands a bit of a clean up. I guess the one thing about this foul brood thing, you start getting all a bit excited about keeping things nice and neat. Keep your records in order. Clean everything up. So look at that. You wouldn't have thought the bush female would have a clean hive tool like that, would you? I don't know. Paranoia. <laughs> I think the interesting thing though is that um, of course there's all the best laid intentions with this bleach and carry on but according to all the bits that I've read this doesn't kill the blowing disease anyway but anyway everything's got to help everything's got to help a little bit doesn't it well anyway we've got the ladies all sorted out in here so we thought well we'll just sneak back down here and give you a bit of a look at what it actually foul brood looks like oh dear Look, mainly we're looking for the perforated little um, brood cells. So if they've been picking at them, perforating them, and that's usually a telltale sign. These girls were not really, they, none of this was very badly infected, just a little bit, so just early stages. So but we'll have a look if we can find the one that we picked apart. You see how they're sunken a little bit there? That's the sort of thing you're looking for. Anyway, here we go. This is what you don't want to see when you're in this bloody mess. You just get your matchstick and squirrel it around in there a bit and you can see it's sticky out. See how it's sort of sticking to your matchstick? Like I said, it's very early stages, so they weren't too bad, really. But, it doesn't matter. Bad enough. Came back positive, so that's the end of that. You get a positive reading, you've got no foot to stand on. <laughs> of course, the shitty part about this, even though it's really sad and very miserable, um, it's just something that you have to do. If you get foul brood, you just really have to bite the bullet get rid of the ones that are infected because if you don't next thing you know if you come back in a year's time all of these 40 hives will have been in trouble and then you've got to burn the old bloody lot of them so that's a bit crap and so yeah if you've only got one hive in your backyard don't forget to do your periodic tests and just make sure you keep an eye on things and you know if you find this well that'll suck in the flow hive I don't know what happens there but you can send it off to get gamma raid so I guess you'd send a get all the honey out of the top thing and send it off to Sydney or Melbourne or no where is it I think it's Queensland for a lot but if you only got one in your backyard I think it's Victoria to get them gamma raid so but anyway so if you're wondering about whether you've got a disease in your in your bee box there's a few ways you can go about finding out this is in Australia I'm sure in America or Europe or wherever else you're living in the world watching us there's somewhere that you can go that's a bee laboratory we've got Gibbles here I think it's Gibbles Pretty sure it's called Gibbles. Anyway, I got the address, but <laughs> and this is like the little pots you put your honey samples in. And the interesting thing is, our honey samples came back negative out of the ten boxes that I picked the honey out of. Obviously, didn't have any badness in it, so that's not necessarily 100% guaranteed. So, but it's regulation, and you should do it anyway. But if you only got one box, I'm guessing you'll know pretty well. If you send a honey sample off, you'll know what's going on. I guess if you had a flow hive, you could just run the thing straight in the little pot and send it off, couldn't you? And that doesn't cost you too much to find out. So anyway, that's honey in that little bucket. 
So that's one option. The other option, this is which a bit more, this is the next excitement, which is what we did the other day when we were going through. There's a few different options. These are little slides from the actual institute, from Gibbles or from clinical labs or whatever you want to call it. So you have your little, little slide that you write on here, what hive you pulled it out of. And um, so you write on your hive, obviously, slide number and the date. And then you put your smear on here and then you send that off to get tested and then they'll send you an email in the mail which is what the email I got which said you're in I'll clear it to you anyway you're in that world of AFB which is very sad I'm almost hard pressed to say it American fouling of the brooded and anyway that's a naughtiness that you don't want because then it also if you get European foul brood it's not so bad but it's still you've got to find out get your test send it off but the other cool thing that I found if you're this isn't a legal thing well I think if this comes back up positive then you've still got to send your slides off to Gibbles but these are really cool these are like the honeybee fowl brood testing kit which is um yeah after this excitement I found these and thought wow oh, you know that looks pretty cool we'll give that a run maybe that'll get us out of trouble the cameraman decided that we'd have to show you on a box that is already infected so we can see if it works I was saying to him on the way here, it'd be interesting if we do a test on this bloody thing and it comes back negative. Then we won't know what to think. Anyway, this is a cool little kit. It's got some cool little instructions on the back. It says, refer to more instructions inside the kit. But anyway, it looks like you get the sample on the grub. And we better open the pot so we can see what we're talking about. And we have, look at this, we have a list of directions. Which is the same directions that's on the back of the packet. Anyway, <laughs> that's all good fun. Then you have a little pot. It has the little activating thing and a, three little ball bearings. You have your little sample stick that I'm assuming you put in where the worm is, or the grub, or the larvae, or whatever you want to call it. The larvae, we better get the right terminology. Then you have a little dipper stick. And inside this bag, when we get to that point, there's a little test kit to find out whether you're pregnant or not. But, oh, impregnated in this case. Anyway, we'll get back in this box before the ladies get too crazy and we'll see if we can get a positive reading out of this box. And as I said earlier though, this is not necessarily... Um, well, I don't know, I don't think it's sanctioned by the Persa people just yet, but it's a very handy little tool. It's hard to be, it's hard to be my jubilant self doing this project. I feel a bit grim today. But anyway, I think it's very important for you guys to see this, so... I don't know, we debated whether or not to show you all this excitement, but it's all part of the gill. So here we are, we'll find our little infected box again. Where did I leave my matchstick? You can see that weren't, they weren't terribly bad, because it's a bit hard to bloody find one to show you. But, that, that's not the point. So don't be fooled, just because you look like they're all healthy, don't be fooled into thinking you haven't got something bad going on. If I can find one to stick in this pot. Found that little larvae in here, which is all yummy and black and sticky. And we'll put them in our little pot. Try not to get too much crap over everything. If you can actually get the little larvae itself, it's a good idea. It says on the directions. But that's not possible, because that's all just goo, that one. <laughs> See how there's little tiny holes here? So when you're looking at a healthy frame, this is like I said earlier, it's a little bit hard to tell because you've got, I don't know, we've got everything in trouble and moved on to a higher plane. Well, I'm not sure where beads go after they're not on this planet. But anyway, when you're looking at a healthy thing, so it's interesting, the pattern here, they've developed out here, but you've also got these ones that are left behind that have been nibbled on. So we'll just put this back together. So that's the purpose of the exercise done. You don't want anybody coming over here to do a bit of robbing. Put it all back together, close it all up, keep the other locals out of here. We we'll put them back in our sterile storage area in a minute. We're just giving you a bit of a rundown on what's going on. So you just give this a bit of a shake for a little while until you mush everything up. Although the ones we got out of there were pretty mushed, but you just want everything to be like a nice liquid form. Right, yeah, so we've got our little pathogen all munched up by the ball bearings. So we just get our little what is it, eyedropper is it, I guess, little dropper-upper. Suck up some goo, 
you got a little bit of goo there and you're just going to drop it on your test pattern and then you just got to wait for it to soak in oh the excitement of it all <laughs> whilst we're waiting i might just go and rinse my hands off well as you'd expect it's come up positive so <laughs> i mean it'd be a bit sad if it didn't come up positive although it's not super strong the tea part like as in because if it only has one line with the c it says it's negative but they have two lines and then your cactus department <laughs> which is us anyway i thought these are a pretty cool little kit they're on the run kit that you can check out what's happening so perhaps go online google up vital foul brood testing kit and have one of them in your kitchen cupboard just for the hell of it so you never know so you can do your part to protect our bees and save us all a whole lot of mess up Well, we just thought it was timely to get organised to have some breakfast, so we're going to have a little bit of a cook-up. Just, the sad part is though we're having a bit of a cook-up for our bee boxes. Anyway, this is the joys of foul brood. You've got to get rid of shit. You could send them off to get gamma radiated, but some of these are a bit sad anyway. So I figure we'll just burn these. I've got some boxes that are a bit better that we're going to get um, fixed. But these ones are on the fire because they were going to get taken out of commission next season anyway. But here we are having a joyous Sunday morning while our ladies are having to sleep in. Oh, hell eh? Well, oh, it's got that under control. Ah, it'd be dead. Oh, Whew. Well, being that it wasn't a total fire ban today, we thought we'd have ourselves a comfort fire and um, accidentally slip a few B frames on there as well. To f but my daughter in law made a very good point. Even aren't you feeling comforted the fact that you've got rid of your American fowl brood? So. I'm reasonably comforted that they're in there on, on the bloody big heap and no one else is going to get infected. It's a bloody sad day by the way if you get this happening and I sympathise if you've only got one hive in your backyard but if you happen to get this, do the right thing, ring up the Persa girls and boys or no, you've got to ring them up and report it and they'll come around and clarify it and then they'll help you destroy the box. I'm not sure what goes on in the suburbia, but I'm sure the Persa people have played with this game before. So, what was I saying earlier? You know, whether it was this old advert campaign, do the right thing, put it in the bin, do the right thing if you've got some AFB. Yeah, because even though you wouldn't want to believe it, and I'm not sure what all the big commercial beekeepers feel about it, but what I know is that you guys are in the epicenter of bee disease. Because you're right next to the ports, you're right next to the airports and the actual seaports. And if anybody's probably going to get an exotic outbreak, not foul brood, that's been here for, since the bloody 1800s, but some other weird ass shit that could come from overseas, like them bloody mites that the whole world's got, that could come into Australia. So you are going to be the guys that are going to tell what's going on. So just do the right thing. And if you love your girls, it's a good idea to get hold of the Persa website. The interesting thing about the beekeeping community is that we were really tight tight little community of concerned people sometimes the concern gets a little bit carried away and they go around snooping in other people's boxes but then again sometimes it's a good help because I'd, I'd actually miss this little infection because it was really early on and one of my concerned mates checked it out and got me organized so cheerio to you